You don't know what belongs to you. That's why you're saying that stuff. You do not know what belongs. If you did know what belongs to you, you're going to pull that weed killer off the shelf. I'm going to kill up all the lies. In the name of Jesus, I am everything that God says that I can be. Weeds, you will not wreak havoc in my life. You will not choke out what the word of God is doing in my life. And so the seven sons of Sceva got a lesson in you can't just call people out in the name of Jesus if you ain't got no relationship. And the long story short, he jumped on them and overpowered them. And they fled out of the house naked. That's to let you know that you cannot just speak the name of Jesus and you're not a believer and expect the same results. And see, sometimes people will do that and they'll point to the church and say, see, that stuff don't work. But do we really know that the man standing up in front of the church was a man of God? Just because he got a church and he got a steeple in Jesus' name somewhere in the building does not mean that that's the church of God or that he is a believer or that he's even a pastor or preacher or teacher, whatever. Because the Bible says, marvel not. Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. Why are, you, why are you marveling? Why are you like, wow, for real? You got that big old church and all the people going and they falling every. Why are you marveling at that? When Jesus said this, this going to happen. He said it's happening right now. You got people by the droves, thousands, going to listen to lies every Sunday. And we marveling like, how do people don't know? How do, how do people, how, how, all of them don't believe, how, how all of them believe the lie? Because Jesus said, they shall turn their ears away from the truth, and they got itching ears. It sure feel good like that plant. I still got these weeds, but pastor, he spray that water on me every Sunday night. Flop around a little bit, I, but ain't you still dealing with so-and-so? Yeah, I've been dealing with that for 25 years, but you know, feel good for the time. Almost like counseling. You just got to keep going back, keep going back, keep going no. And so Matthew 17, I'm going to wrap this up. We got this verse and then another verse. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to them, kneeling down to them, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long should I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and saying, Why couldn't we cast it out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely, I say to you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Very powerful message. And it's still, we're still, this whole thing is still all talking about authority. Yeah, but here's a, it, it, this is a very, very key message, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run through this for the sake of time. It says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came unto him a certain man kneeling down and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. Another verse that says the epileptic, and it says a sore vexed, and he falleth, and he oft times falleth into the fire and off into the water. So this kid is just, he just in the water and he's fine. He's going to kill himself one day. Basically, he's like, listen, you got to help him because you go into these fits and he's just, this and that. Now, I truly believe that had medicine and everything were modernized, they would have given him a diagnosis and that's what it would have been. And the enemy's allowed to hide because we just go label it. This is what it is. And we go forget about it. Put it on a shelf. The enemy's happy. But... And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. They had walked with Jesus. They knew Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They ate the same food and all this other kind of stuff. They were with Jesus, but they couldn't get the Jesus results. 
Then Jesus said unto them, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? In other words, how long do I have to be with y'all? Y'all have seen me do all this stuff. Y'all have been around me and all this other kind of stuff, but y'all still ain't figured out what I'm actually doing or what you have the authority and the power to do. How long shall I be with you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. That's key. I want you to start right there. Jesus rebuked the devil. Notice Jesus didn't say, let's get a diagnosis, let's go to a doctor, let's figure out what's going on. Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that hour. What medical? It was spiritual. A lot of things that we call medical are spiritual. But Jesus rebuked the devil. But here's the key in what God gave him a revelation on. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? Jesus, what's up? We were spitting and foaming and slapping our hands and we had the oil in it. Why couldn't we do it? Jesus says, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you that if you have the faith of greater than the mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible to you. So Jesus gives this great parable. Mustard seed really, 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 really small. Mountain's really, 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 really big. He said, if you got the faith of greater than mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be removed. So it ain't that they didn't, it, it's, 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 it's really not about the size of your faith. People say, well, you got to increase your faith and build it up and build it, build it and all these different things. You can't have faith in your faith. Faith in God. So if I have the faith of grain of a mustard seed, which is really, 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 really small, I can say to the mountain, get out of the way. But that wasn't the key. That was, that was part of the key. That wasn't the whole solution or the whole conclusion of the matter. How be it? Verse 21. Very, very important. This is like, write it down, put it on the door, pose, whatever, because this is going to mold you well in life, not only now, but tomorrow, next year, five years from now. This is very, very key. We missed this. We missed the whole, the whole conjunction of this whole portion right here. How be it this kind, this kind right here, this, this, this is what you're dealing with right now, this kind right here, that, that what you just seen right there, this kind goes not out. It's not going to leave. It's not going to change. It's not going to go away. It's not going to do anything. It's going to stay the same unless you do two things. Pray and fast. You can have faith. He said if you got faith, grain of mustard, you say there's not be that roof. You sit up there all day. But if you don't do the praying and fasting, why is that significant? Most people don't even know why. People tell me pray and fast. I think grandma and them say all the time. People say pray, pray and fast, but I didn't have an understanding. I didn't have a revelation. What's the purpose of fasting? Why do we fast? What's that? Fasting empties you out. Fasting desensitizes. It, it, it deadens this flesh and it heightens the spirit. So in other words, it's just like I described before, the war between flesh and the spirit. The spirit man is, 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 is only but so strong, but if my flesh is stronger than him, I can kind of drown him out. It's almost like what people try to do when they're trying to, they try to, what they do with yoga and all that stuff, they call it meditating. All that stuff comes from the Bible. Meditating, but it depends on what you're meditating on. Fasting and prayer does two things. There's something that was key with Jehoshaphat, and it, talks, and it ties in with this here, and it ties in with our authority. Jehoshaphat feared and sought himself to seek the Lord. He prayed and he fasted. He fasted and he prayed because I know that there is something that needs to be done, but unless I hear from the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to know how to do it. The method may be different depending upon the circumstance of the situation. I have to wait for God's timing and his method. What happens is people move outside of that and they go with the method, which is the fasting and the, they go not with the fasting and the praying, they believe with the grain of a mustard seed and they say to the mountain and then nothing happens and they say it don't work. But they didn't pray and fast for God to give them a plan. God gave Jehoshaphat a plan. He said, go over there to that cliff and bring the praises. 
He could have spoke all day. The army shall not prevail against us. In the name of Jesus, strike them down right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I got the faith the grain of a mustard seed. The army still marching. Man, Lord, I just spoke, and I just, you didn't fast and pray. That method worked over here, but it ain't going to work right now. What you did yesterday for so-and-so ain't going to work on such and such today. You need to fast and pray for revelation so that I can give you a distinct plan for this person, this hour, this time. That's the key. He said this kind. If he said a kind, that would have meant that all kind. He said, no, this kind. This, this is... This is situationally specific. There are some things that are situationally specific that we need to pray for and fast for specifically and say, God, what is your plan for this person? What is your plan for this situation? What is your method for this situation at this time? That was the key. And that's what we need to recognize when we're operating in authority. And Jesus taught us that principle. Lastly, we're in right standing with God. It ain't got nothing to do with your, what, what your position is with God. A lot of times people think, well, Mother so-and-so, she's been in the church 45 years, and I know that if she prayed for me, then, then she da 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 the devil is a lot. You can pray the same way Mary so-and-so prayed, and she's been in the church 50 years, and get your prayers answered if you've been saved two days. Yeah. Yeah. No such thing as a prayer warrior in the sense to where there's no gifts of the Spirit. That's, you, you look at the Bible, you got apostles, prophets, teachers, preachers, all this other kind of stuff. Ain't no through the way they say pray, prayer warrior. There are people that pray that are more committed to prayer and more committed to fasting. We can call them warriors, but God didn't say, I'm delegating these people over here. They're the prayer warriors, but you the sometime to pray in the time people. You ain't got you got little power. No. That God would be a some the, the God would be a the, the God would be a respecter of person. If I give uh, Mary Sue so and so more power to pray than you do, then I'm a respect of persons. If what happens is Mary may pay for 10 hours and I'm only praying for an hour and Mary getting powerful results so we attribute that to her again the fork and the spoon but the fork and the spoon is nothing without the hand. All she's doing is being more committed. She's doing what Jehoshaphat did. The one person got attacked and they, they spoke to it and they went out in the army slaughtering. Let like, God be this Pray. The man prayed and he spoke your word and they still killed him. But Mary Sue, she fasted and prayed and you gave her a plan and she was victorious. The answer is what you just said. She waited for God's plan. She waited for his method. And so in James 5, 12 through 20, last scripture. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if any if any one among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the number one reasons people don't operate in their authority, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this in closing, is because they don't understand this principle. They don't understand that they're right standing with God. One of the number one reasons that people do not operate in their authority, I'll say it again, is because they don't understand that they're no more right standing with God than the person that's been serving them for 20 years. 
The reason why people go to churches and they get in lines and they allow people to slap them on the face, nothing wrong with that. I believe that people have healing ministry. I believe that there's gifts of the Spirit. I believe that there's all of that. But Jesus never told us to highly esteem uh, uh, the man above the gift. And sometimes what happens is people start searching after man and not after God. I say that again. People start searching after man and not after God. Why, why, why do I say that? It's because sometimes what happens is it's just like what I was giving the illustration with, with the woman who's been praying for 10 hours and the man who's been praying for an hour. We begin to attribute the woman who's been praying for 10 hours, she got it. Well, she got something. There may be a gift there. There, I'm not discounting that God doesn't give people certain gifts of healing and different things like that. But that's not to say that anybody can lay hands or you can touch and agree with anyone and it shall be signs and wonders shall follow them that who believe. These signs and wonders shall follow the past as that's been preaching for 20 years. These signs and wonders shall follow the people that have been, you know, they just they did some miraculous stuff last week and they, they, they did it last month. They've been doing it for years. Then that believe. And so, above and in, 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 in closing, but above all things, my brothers, we're not neither by heaven or neither by earth, neither by any oath, but let your lay, yay be yay and let your nay be nay and let you fall into temptation. They say, don't swear by that. Just let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Is there any afflicted? Is there is any among you afflicted? Let them pray. Is any a mar is any married? Let them sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And the reason why they're talking about the elders of the church, because this is order. You know what I'm saying? You don't want everybody turning to each other in the middle of the church service and laying hands on each other. That would be out of order. In the context of this particular scripture, they're talking about order. If someone's sick, let them come to the front. There's order. They've got people who are seasoned in the word, so to speak. But that doesn't mean that the person that seasons in the, in the word is any more powerful than the person that just got born again yesterday. But people, if they're not taught, they take that on and they believe that. And it says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if they have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Confess your faults to one another. Be careful with that. And confess your faults to everybody. Confess your faults to people who you know are mature enough and who have a relationship enough to be able to handle what you're dealing with. And pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Righteous means what? Right standing with God. Your prayers avail much. Why do they avail much? Here's an illustration. Elias or Elijah was in there subject to like passions as we are. What it is saying? Elijah had it. Elijah didn't have it all together. Elijah woke up some days and said some stuff he had no business saying. Did some stuff he didn't have no business doing. He was a man with like passions. He had faults. He had things that he was struggling with. So right standing does not mean perfection. Right standing means that it's a position or a seat of authority, which we have. And it said that he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. He prayed that it would not rain. And it rained out on the space on the earth by the space of three and six three years and six months. And it didn't rain. He prayed, here's this man who had struggles, who's human. He said, it ain't gonna rain, it don't rain. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. And it rained again. Brethren, if any of you do bear from the truth and one converted, let him know that he which converted the sinner from error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Good idea, God idea. We must recognize his will. It was in God's will for the earth not to bring forth rain for three years. Elijah prayed in conjunction with that again. Method fasting, fasting and prayer. Most of the time, people are afraid to do things in the, in, in the spirit is because they don't know. Well, what if it don't work? It ain't up to you whether it works or not. It's up to God. Elijah, uh, 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 Lazarus, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That was God's will. He told him it was God's will. He said, listen, he's going to rise again. Uh, we went over the scripture. But wouldn't it have been a good idea for him to raise everybody? I mean, it was some more dead people. 
I mean, it would be nice to raise all them dead people and all the people be rekindled with their family members and everything like that. It would just been so beautiful. It would just been a really good thing. But it wasn't God thing. It wasn't a God idea. And that's what happens a lot of times when people get caught up in doing good things. That's why people get tired and they get worn out in ministry because they're in all of these different areas and they haven't asked God to get them to the area to where they're supposed to be. We got evangelists who are in pulpits that should be out in the highways and the byways and ministering to the people in the highways and the byways, but because they're afraid to put themselves under submission to people who are truly pastors and teachers, they are rather operate in fear and operate out of order and be in a pulpit. Completely out of order. And then you got people who are supposed to be a, 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 a true apostles, but they're not out planting churches, they're running them. That's not that's not the that's not the that's not the word of God that, that, that I pray for. It's not the, the description of an apostle is someone that goes about and plants churches. They help pastors. If you're pastoring, you don't have time to help other pastors because you're too busy pastoring your church. Good idea, God idea. And so while you may be doing a good thing, if you're not doing what God has called you to do, you're outside of his will. That's why you can't help everybody. Jesus said it best. The poor you won't have what you always. And so while you may be assigned to help certain people, you can't help everybody. You know why? Because you would exhaust yourself. There's no way one person can help everybody. There's no way one ministry can do it all. There's no way that nobody can do everything. You have to pray and ask God for discernment and direction so that you can do what God has called you to do to the people who God has called you to do it for and with the people who God has called you to do it with so you can operate in this authority. Good idea, God idea. And so in wrapping up, we recognize the believer's authority. We all have authority. We all have authority. One of the best movies I ever saw was The Lion King. One of the very things that they got the Lion King to do was forget who he was. That was the power. The enemy knew who he was the whole time. But he didn't want him to recognize who he was because once he recognized who he was, he would operate in the authority that God had given him. And so that's the message today. Recognize our authority. Operate in it. Recognize that the very things that we're putting up with, we don't have to put up with. You can. We can kill it right there on the shelf. If you want to let them weeds continue to fester and do all of this stuff in your life, Holy Spirit is has He's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do anything. And the enemy will certainly allow you to perpetuate and go through our life believing the lies and walking in darkness and doing all of these different things. But God has given us authority. We have authority in Jesus. We have authority to speak the word only. We have the authority to change the environment and to change the things around us. We have authority to change people in our family, people in our, in, in, in our, in our, in our work environment, in our school, in our neighborhood. We have the authority to do that. That's what we're here for. We're ambassadors. All of this, that, that looks really good, but a person that's holding it and having all that power never uses it, that's like the superhero that got all the power but let the enemy beat up on what good would Thor be if Thor just had the hammer and he just let the people just beat up on him? Like, man, use, it, use your hammer, man. Yeah, I don't think it worked. No. And it do work. Other people, man, it worked. The boss worked, man, speak it. No, I don't think it worked. Kicking him in his butt on the way. Man, you Thor, man. Same way. We'll probably walk out of the movie theater and we see something like that. That'll frustrate me. Man, you mean to tell me what? Iron Man, you taking that? What? Man, shh, man, you man, shh, man, listen, man, you know who you is? The whole time God is saying, but do you know who you are? The enemy doing the same thing to you on a day to day basis. And I'm sitting here cheering, please just pick up your hammer. Just fire a shot, a missile, do something. But you said you got the same power, same heaven you won't use. I'll just carry you. God is saying, use your authority. 
use your authority. So in closing, if anybody does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are going to open the doors up to the church. We're going to open the floor up to the church for anybody that doesn't know him. It's as simple as confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart the Lord Jesus, that he came, that he died, that he rose again, that he now sits at the right hand of the Father ever in the city home for us. If anybody Give wants to dedicate their lives. Everything else.